some problems locally. It's in Dallas uh, with the internet. It is going in and out. We've noticed it today uh, in the buildings and so forth. So if I lose you, I think I'm going to continue. I'm going to go 90 minutes, and if I lose you, well, no, we can't do that. They won't be able to pick it up. But, John, could they come back and watch it later? Not, right, not if I go black, though. So, okay, good. I don't know the inside stuff. I know a little bit about fungus and the human body, anatomy, physiology, and so forth. Know very little. I know, I know a lot about fungus. But I don't know about the internet. I don't know the makings of all these things, so bear with me. I promised, I spoke to Blessed Life today, some of these folks have to get in and out fairly quickly, so I want to cover some things. But to me, as always, your questions are the most important thing that I handle today. Somebody out there is worried about gaining weight over the holidays. The Fungus Link to Weight Loss, it's now a, what, a 20-year-old 20, book? 17, 18 year old, 2004. Wow, it's only a 16 year old book. Uh, somebody's gonna get that signed and out to you. I promised Debbie that I would open today talking a little bit about SEAC T. Folks, I'll tell you what I know. I was approached by a nurse back when I was in uh, nutrition, uh, clinical nutrition here in Dallas many years ago, a nurse had breast cancer and she was told by her doctor, who's a friend of mine, to come see me, get some dietary consultations. Uh, she told me she had been drinking a concoction of burdock root and blood root and, you know, a couple other things. And then she gave me information, long gone, this was decades ago. Uh, but she swore that this tea, which she drank every day, helped her breast cancer go into remission. Let me, uh, let me send up my signal on this. I used it for many, many people, and some did okay, and some it failed. I used vitamin B17 at a time that, that was quite controversial. It was called Laetrile uh, for people. And I want to tell you what I'd do if I had cancer. Breast cancer, 1% of all new breast cancers are men. So if I had cancer anywhere in my body, this would be one, SEAC T. But it's analogous, in my humble opinion, to Laetrile. Why wouldn't we use, why wouldn't we use SEAC-T? Why wouldn't I juice with falcarinol, which is uh, the uh, phytonutrient in carrot, organic raw carrots? Why wouldn't I squeeze 12 of those through and throw in an inch of ginger root and well, a curcumin root? Why wouldn't I do that? Why wouldn't I use SEAC-T? When you're told you have cancer, folks, this bump or lump doesn't just come on. It's been simmering, sometimes for years and years and years, until you palpate it and say, whoa, what's this thing growing on my neck? Isn't that my lymph nodes? You know. Um, so let me educate you a little bit. Uh, rhubarb root, sheep sorrel, slippery elm bark, and burdock root. That was the original Renee. Case, C-A-I-S-S-E. -S -S -E. That's uh, spelled backwards, not Renee, but Case spelled backwards is Essiac. So she named, she lived to be 88 or 89 years old, something like that. But she held, we didn't know it was burdock root, uh, rhubarb root, sheep sorrel, and slippery elm bark. But she held that formula very closely. She didn't uh, give it out to the general public. And she purportedly helped a lot of people with it. This was a long time ago, 100 years ago. Um, things are different today. I talk on this show about endocrine disruptors. I'm not big on BPA and, you know, I know others are and I, God bless them, they are endocrine disruptors. But a hundred thousand times stronger than that plastic bottle is a mycotoxin called xerelinone. Oh, by the by, it's being added to our meat supply in America, nowhere else but in America. Um, so this is what I try, it's, it's made from a mold. There's a mold called fusarium that naturally degrades and has several mycotoxins. One is called deoxynevalenol. Uh, it's also called vomitoxin. What do you think it makes horses do if they get into too much of this, right? Vomit. Uh, do you have a family member who you can't figure out who's vomiting and vomiting? Have they gotten into D-O-N, deoxynevalenol? It's in our food supply. Have they gotten into the T2 toxin? That's another fusarium mycotoxin. But the most notable, I believe, is this one called xerelinone. 
and it was first discovered many, many years ago. Um, uh, Xerelinone was known as an estrogen. It mimics human estrogen. When God shuts it off, Xerelinone turns it on. Uh, and why we're adding it to our meat supply, I don't know, but let me, let me fully disclose everything to you. I believe it was 1993, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration here in the U.S., found that it was very safe. Um, now, I live in America, right? I'm a guy who held a gun, in, well, in my holster in Vietnam. I would have used it for our preservation of our rights here in America. I didn't have to, fortunately. I was a corpsman. I was an emergency room, you know, doctor, nurse. Um, and... Uh, and I never needed to use that gun. It actually rusted my holster. It's, it wasn't funny then, but it's funny now. I never wanted to use it. I would have. We have rights in America. And my right is, I went to lunch today, and I could have had a, a salad with steak on it, but I didn't. Because I don't eat restaurant or store-bought meat. I'm worried about Xeranol. What's Xeranol? You can't patent a mycotoxin from a fungus, but you can twist it a bit and you can add things to it and you're granted a patent. Ralgro or Xeranol is the synthetic patentable Xerelinone. Long way of telling you this. When we're getting into the things we're getting into today, not so our grandparents, but we're getting into the things we are today, why wouldn't, if I have a lump, a bump, a bloody spot on my body, a, a sore that isn't healing, why wouldn't I use SEAC T? Now, I remember 10, 15, no, it was longer than that, maybe 25 years ago, they began adding una de gato. Renee Case had it wrong, said some people. You need cat's claw, una de gato, the herb, una de gato. Um, and then the purists went back and said, no, no, that isn't going to work. Stick with Renee's old formula. You can get it online. You can buy her original form. You can buy it. I'm sure it's everywhere. Burdock root, rhubarb root, sheep sorrel, slippery elm bark. Would it shock any of you if those killed fungus? Do you see where I'm going with this? Now, I read this to the group today on Blessed Life, and it's so humbling. I want to read it to you. Those of you who have been with me for quite a while, you've heard this. It's only a couple sentences. But the more this keeps turning up in my work, I first read this to a group of integrative oncologists in 2015 or somewhere, uh, somewhere a year ago, uh, several years ago. <clears throat> These oncologists are doctors who believe chemo might help if it's very dilute, along with electro, getting rid of electromagnetic fields and doing vitamin C IVs and all sorts of other stuff. I like these doctors. Here's what it was. This comes out of WebMD, verbatim. I'm quoting it from WebMD. WebMD is a pharmaceutical, it's a medical website, right? So know when you go to it, you're going to get what allopaths believe in. Nutritional confusion in oncology. With 20 to 90% of cancer patients, patients using supplements, oncologist Dr. Richard Frank is confident with the cancer questions. Totally confident. Uh, how big is that lump? Well, it's X amount of centimeters. What's going to happen? We're worried it's going to metastasize. Um, how do you get rid of it? We can try burning it with x-ray. We can try, you know, putting chemo on it, in it, etc. But when the questions that I'm not so confident in come out, inevitably every patient asks me, what should I eat? How can I fight the cancer by eating the right foods? Will vitamins help me? They want to know which foods and supplements will actually help fight the cancer better and live longer. And he said, I don't know what to do with those. I love this guy. I don't know him. But he's very, very truthful. He knows his toolbox is half filled. When you have cancer, you want the toolbox completely filled and then some. I don't know. I've told you this before. I, if I had cancer, I don't know if I'd try very, very dilute chemo. The object with poison therapy, chemotherapy, is to poison the cancer cells before you poison too many human cells. It's really that simple. Um, and then they use other things, x-rays, 
uh, and, you know, radiation therapy and other therapies. But what this doctor is saying, Richard Frank, is so cool to me. When they ask me what to eat, I don't know. If you don't learn clinical nutrition in your medical training, Dr. Frank, and WebMD, if you don't learn clinical mycology, you're not going to know, especially if there's a link between solid tumors and blood tumors and fungus, which there is. No doctor in America, none of you, can call this show and say fungus doesn't cause cancer. It's been documented. The IARC, the organization that studies cancer, has listed many, many items that cause cancer. And one of them is called aflatoxin. Aflatoxin is made by a mold. I mean, it's a very, very common mold, aspergillus mold. So just like this fusarium gets in our corn, the animal's hay supply, in our peanut, in our wheat supply, and we eat it, aflatoxin is made by a different aspergillus mold. What would you do? What would you do? Would you go to Essiac tea? Would you try Laetrile? This is America. It's so great living here. I don't know if the doctors are comfortable with us buying apricot pits. I don't know if the doctors are comfortable with us mixing up in our a cauldron in our kitchen, you know, Essiac tea, but I'm doing it. Would you do it? Oh, Zerella, no. yeah. It's Z-E-A-R-A-L-E-N-O-N-E. -E -E. Z-E-A-R-A-L-E-N-O-N-E. -E -E. Thank you guys for asking this. Thank you for typing it tonight into a search engine. Thank you for going to BPCC, uh, no, BC, breast cancer, bcpp.org. Uh, breast cancer center or something, breast cancer research, um, and typing in xerelinone. Thank you for, I should have brought him over here. I had him here yesterday and we talked quite a bit about this. Thank you for studying the most potent, harmful uh, substance known to man to mess with our endocrine system. And not only that, know that it's kidney toxic, it's immune system toxic. This stuff will take you down. And I've just got a question, okay, I'm just Doug, you guys know me by now. Why in the world, if we have isolated something that is uh, 100,000 times more potent an estrogen mimicker, would we then put it in our meat supply? Does that leak into butter and yogurt and cottage cheese and buttermilk and, you know, milk? Read B breast cancer BCPP. Hey John, look up BC or uh, or is any uh, Damon or John? I know you're busy, but if somebody can look up breast cancer BCPP.org, I think that's what the website is. I have it over BC. across a uh, BC breast cancer pp.org. See if that's a breast cancer website. I really like it. The information on that website is very, very helpful. So, would I take Essiac tea? Reports of cancer curing tea originated in the forests of Ontario, Canada. Surfaced in the 1920s. The tea's ingredients remained secret for decades. Canadian nurse Renee M. Case held the only recipe and she protected it until just before her death. Uh, allopaths are probably going to condemn this. Although the tide is turning, this is really interesting, folks. It now appears there's more of us watching what we eat, exercising, and taking supplements than there are people taking medication. And many of us, I understand, do both. Sometimes blood pressure gets too high, you get scared, you go on blood pressure medicine. Sometimes your cholesterol goes 300, you're worried you go on statin drugs. Correct. It's B a cancer prevention program or something. Yeah. BCPP.org. You go in there and please read about precocious puberty. Uh, what? We know this is happening in people and we keep this in our meat supply. Sidebar, FDA, totally safe, don't worry about it. Wait till you see what happens to breast cell cancer lines in the presence of this. I mean, it's, okay, let me go back to where I was going before. I'm sorry, I'm jumping around. I am free 
in America. I don't want to eat restaurant steaks unless they're grass-fed, grass-finished. Because you see, in the grass-fed world, they allow you the last month or two of the cow's life to force feed grains, corn. What's that all about? To fatten them. Gee, you think, you guys. The fungus linked to weight loss. I eat a lot of corn. Why do I need this book? Because you're 30, 40, 80 pounds overweight. Corn's a carb. Carb feeds fungus. What makes bread swell? Can that same yeast make us swell? This is a couple hundred pages, that's wrong, 150 pages, on what makes people swell. Okay, so we got Essiac T out of the way. If you go to a medical website, they're probably going to say, just be careful. I like that. But now we go to natural websites, which say, stay totally away from chemo. Folks, our job in our pursuit for excellent health is to see both sides of the toolbox, is to say, hmm, maybe if this is a local little cancer, a couple x-rays, if they can focus it right there on my little cancer, maybe that's a good idea. Don't let Doug Kaufman, don't let Dr. Smith, but don't let anyone make that decision for you. I'll never forget when my wife and I started having children, I thought, they don't come with a manual. <laughs> You've got to learn all this on your own, and you better do what's right for them. And that's created this incredible anti and pro vaccination, which one day we should uh, address. But I want you to know this is something I would do. Just like B17, that's something I would do. So, Debbie, I hope that helps. Uh, plenty of information on that. Uh, the SAC T, this SAC T, okay, Nurse Renee case treated patients with inexpensive natural cancer fighting T for 50 years free of charge and had the support of many renowned scientists, respected doctors, and cancer survivors until her death in 1978. This SAC T was a recipe from the Canadian Ojibwa tribe who called it the tea of life. Many patients who were told there was no hope for their doc from their doctors were able to beat their cancer using SAC T. I can't endorse that. This is written on a website. To date, it has proven safe for all but pregnant or nursing women. For best results, buy the ingredients individually and prepare it yourself. This comes, uh, oh, I think this is from Greg Nelson. It was on Greg Nelson's website, which I really like. Um, thank you, Greg, for that. For general health, drink a half ounce of tea and two fluid ounces of water each day. To fight disease, gradually increase consumption of SEAC tea to one ounce of tea in two ounces of water daily. Yeah, burdock root, sheep sorrel, slippery elm, and a Turkish rhubarb. The recipe, by the way, my friends uh, at The Truth About Cancer uh, put this up on their website too. SEAC, E-S-S-I-A-C. Tea. Yeah, and, and do you know it's antifungal? A doctor sent me this today. Oh, I see we've already got, uh, okay, bear with me. Already got people wanting to talk. Here's a headline. This article just came out apparently, let's see, December 29th, 2000. Oh, uh, submitted for publication, published 2019. Adrenal insufficiency caused by paracoccidioideomycoses. Three case reports and review. Object, fungal infections can affect the adrenal glands, causing primary adrenal insufficiency. Although endemic to South America, paracoccidioideomycoses can lead to uh, primary adrenal insufficiency, or PAI. This is important, folks, and here's why. Yeah, this doctor is a friend of mine, and whenever he finds things like this, he sends it to me. He's in uh, uh, maybe New York. So, adrenaline, so all, sitting on your kidneys, you have a couple little adrenal glands, right? And they produce hormones. So they are there for what? What did you learn yesterday or Tuesday? They're endocrine glands. Any tissue in your body that produces hormones are endocrine glands. When those go awry, we end up in an endocrinologist's office. Problem is, endocrinologists didn't learn about clinical nutrition, didn't learn about clinical mycology. 
So your diabetes is going to be neutralized with a shot every day. Or your thyroid, uh, TSH, your thyroid stimulating hormone, if it's up, you're low. If it's low, you're hyperthyroid. Uh, he's going to do some tests, and then he's going to give you medication based on that. Every one of us, I think, we've kind of been dumbed down. You know, we, well, what causes that? Well, we've, <laughs> we don't know. Don't you have 170 IQ? You made it through medical school? Eight years of medical training? Three years of residency? Why is it we're taking our very brightest in America and telling them, hush up? You got your certificate. Now go over there and we'll allow you to earn a million dollars a year. Shh, you're not smart enough to figure out the cause of diabetes. Can I just make a suggestion? I wrote another book that still flies off the shelves. Dr. Dave and I wrote another book called The Fungus Link to Diabetes. Folks, if you inject rats or mice with two antibiotics, streptozotocin and baflomycin, they all get diabetes. They're mycotoxins. How do we give mice diet? Mice, you know, mice don't sit there and eat Cheetos and, and drink hot chocolate and soda pop. How do mice get diabetes? We gotta blow out their beta cells. And the way we do that is with mycotoxins, antibiotics. You and I are logical. So we're gonna say, wait a minute, I've been on antibiotics and my blood sugar is always 122, 140, 180. Doctor says I have diabetes. He's done a lot of tests. You test your urine, test your blood. He says I have diabetes. And then he put me on a medication insulin or, you know, another, a glitazone, glitazone they're called. By the way, the glitazomes, both glitazone, medica diabetic medications, are antifungal. I mean, it's so amazing nobody sees this. It just blows me away nobody sees this. How do we give a mouse diabetes? It's on the shelf. Baflomycin or streptozotocin. Your doctor can confirm this, but he'd have to look it up, you know. Um, you mean we give fungus to mice and they get diabetes? We give mycotoxins to mice, fungal byproduct? How do you give bunny rabbits cancer? You give them a different mycotoxin. You give them what we talked about earlier, aflatoxin. Comes from a different mold, aspergillus mold. And they get diabetes? I mean, they get cancer? Yeah. They grow lumps in their body? Yeah. They can get... Hematologic cancers, you know, leukemia, yeah, yeah. And yet we're breathing this stuff. I mean, it's in old moldy homes. And then the medical community's consensus on mold is, ah, don't worry about it, can cause little sniffles. We got a problem. Houston, we've got a problem in America. Thank you, John. Okay. And what else did I promise? At any rate, um, the, one of the treatments that the doctors used to use uh, for people with adrenal insufficiency. Adrenal insufficiency, folks, adrenal uh, insufficiency leads to adrenal fatigue, part of the endocrine system. What's causing it? An endocrine disruptor. We've already talked about that. How amazing is that? I doubt it's from, you know, Roundup, although that's a huge problem. I doubt it's from plasticizers, although that's a huge problem. My money would be on it's something we're adding to our food or something we're breathing in a moldy home. Okay? We used to, I, I taught these doctors to study something called DGL. Do you know what DGL? It's licorice root, but it's deglycerinated. Uh, it's changed and it makes it safer to use. So people with hypertension, for example, high blood pressure, have to be very careful of licorice root. Uh, DGL is a whole other thing, but, but I did a, a little survey before I came in here, a little study. Antifungal activity of licorice root extracts. I mean, here it is. Although the compound was reported earlier to be active just against Candida albicans, this is the first report of its antifungal activity against drug-resistant mutants, yeast and fungus. Licorice. Adrenal insufficiency caused by a fungus. Well, let's give these patients... You see my life? 
let's give these patients licorice root. And they're reporting back, wow, I do have more energy. I feel really, really better than I felt in a long, long time. Why? Well, licorice root must work. Why? The brilliance is going to be in the person who figures, and, and I'm not brilliant, the brilliance is going to be in all these doctors, and they never met each other. Adrenal insufficiency caused by fungus. And then this report is 2009, antifungal activity of licorice root extracts. They never met each other. This guy would say, well, you know what? Licorice root has extracts that kill fungus, not only yeast, candida yeast, but other fungi. Oh, I just published that adrenal insufficiency, which probably, you know, 50% of Americans have anyway, uh, is caused by a fungus. Yeah, now we know why. One of the highlights, and John was with me, my producer of almost 20 years, was when I met Dr. Ganum several months ago. He and his son were coming in to the airport and we drove out, took an hour and 15 minutes, went out to the airport and met him. Finally, he sat next to me and he said, two like-minded old men. He has had to jump through hoops, I know, he's 70, he's my age. He's had to jump through hoops for 40 years, 50 years of his career, because fungus is nothing. I have gone out and taught doctors and tried to help people and run TV shows by the grace of God and try and teach you folks that the reason we have adrenal insufficiency in the first place, yet another endocrine disruptor, fungus, got into our body. Now our adrenals aren't working, the hormones aren't being made, adrenaline, you know, and you're tired. Postprandial drowsiness is very common. After you eat, you just fall asleep. Oh, let's give them some licorice root. Licorice root really helps. We don't know why, but yeah, we do. These three papers I hold in my hand show why licorice root works so well for these people. Boy, I had a bunch of stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to, Oh, I've got some good stuff. Should I wait till Tuesday to do this? Okay. By the way, John had a great workout. The sun came out, but it's cold and it's windy. All of, you know, when I say cold, you people watching me from uh, Fargo, uh, Fargo, North Dakota, Chicago, New York, um, it's 53 out here. You talk about cold. I was bundled up. You don't know cold till you've been in the winter in Dallas. I don't think it's ever been below freezing this year yet, has it, John? Yeah, I agree. Uh, again, plus, what's the name of the writer of the book, Mycology, Total Gut Balance? Oh, uh, Dr. Microbiome, is that right, John? Isn't it Mycobiome, or did he do Microbiome? Okay, Microbiome, okay, Dr. Microbiome. Uh, that's my friend, Dr. Ganum, uh, Dr. Micro, M-I-C-R-O, Biome, B-I-O-M-E, the terrain. When you and I were born, Ben, there was a little tiny bit of bacteria and yeast in there, and they work synergistically. They compete for a food supply. So when we drank mom's milk or got into applesauce, they compete for a food supply. Along came the first antibiotic. Now, antibiotics are indiscriminate. Look. They're lifesavers, but they can also be life takers, okay? There, I said it. Antibiotics have been totally abused in America, not from Doug Kaufman. Every medical journal is talking about antibiotic use and overuse. We have blown it. They're now calling for antibiotic stewardship. Where was this in 1970? There are several common cancers linked with the increased frequency of taking antibiotics. Okay, uh, This guy, Dr. Ganum, who has been a friend of mine for years, but I just met him, uh, wrote a book called Total Gut Balance, Dr. Microbiome, all one word, DR, microbiome, no spaces, no, no periods or commas, drmicrobiome.com. Then Renee asks, hey Doug, are mouth sores fungal or bacterial? There again is where uh, a doctor can really shine. A doctor uh, should be able to differentiate between a bacteria and a fungus. Um, sometimes just taking a little swab, 
if it's an open sore in your mouth, an aptus ulcer, uh, taking a little swab, growing it out on a petri dish, or implicating bacteria, they can do culture sensitivity and know what to treat that with. Uh, mouth sores, aptus ulcers. Man, I need to say it again, don't I? Because I'm getting mileage out of it in January and February. You guys think this is good. Wait till February 16th, two days after Valentine's Day. It's not coincidental, Renee, that you're seeing these tiny mouth ulcers at a time when you maybe overdid sugar, maybe drank a little alcohol, maybe ate some bread and pasta over the holidays. How much is too much? All of us, right now, real time, have a threshold. You know, mine's maybe down here because I've been addressing this for years. But many of you have a threshold. Then we also have shock organs for one reason or another. Um, maybe when Renee was young, she ate some really scalding soup and it burned her mouth. That's now a vulnerable tissue. So when she gets an infection, it gravitates. I'll see you guys. Hey, good day. Thanks for your help. Um, it gravitates to uh, an injured tissue in your body. Some people, that's the joints. Uh, some people, that's the gut, lots of antibiotics. Some people had a blow to the head in a car wreck or something, and now uh, if they mess with their diet, it just affects them totally differently. So, so maybe you're up to here, Renee, with bacteria or mold, a little bit more, and these things, a little bit more feeding it, and these things begin growing. So your doctor will be able to differentiate between a fungus or a bacteria, I hope. What about numbness, constant on, uh, Constance on Facebook? What about numbness on your lip, travel to your face? Uh, what can you use? They're keeping me in the hospital uh, due to more testing. Okay. Here's the best information I can give you. Three years ago, I spoke to a group of doctors at the Academy of um, Complementary and Integrative Medicine. The whole lecture was on getting your brain back. My lecture, Constance, was on neurotoxicity. You got nerves all over in your face. What in the world is causing this? Could you have had a stroke, you know, and a damage? I'm sure they've tested you for that. Numbness in your lip that travels your face. Neurotoxicity. What are neurotoxins? Some grains in our diet. None of you would doubt, if you've been where Doug Kaufman had been in the last, you know, 70 years, none of you would doubt that alcohol is neurotoxic. Constance, do you enjoy a glass of wine? Have you hit an age now where wine is affecting you differently? Wine is neurotoxic. If you don't believe what I'm saying and don't do this, buy a case of beer and go home and drink it. You'll see how neurotoxic beer is. Also, in 1945, scientists first realized that penicillin was neurotoxic. So Constance, did you get the flu? Have you been on antibiotics for the past few weeks? Neurotoxicity, something's disabling synaptic transmission, nerves communicating with nerves. And this can happen anywhere in your body. Something is disrupting that. Endocrine disruptors we talked about, synaptic disruptors, neurotoxicity. All you got to do while you're in the hospital is kind of close your eyes and say a little prayer. God, what happened here? Oh my gosh, I took two months of antibiotics with the flu. Or, come on, went to mom and dad's. They're, they enjoy their wine. And during my stay there for three or four days over Christmas, I must have drank a whole bottle of wine. I've never done that before. Now, if this continues after the wine or the antibiotic is gone, how do we fix the gut? with some of these neurotransmitter problems, neurotoxins. We fix it generally with a change in diet and with probiotics, putting the good bacteria in there that can become your fighters against these synaptic uh, inhibitors. So a changed diet, follow the Kaufman One Diet for a few weeks and see if this just doesn't magically clear up. There is strength, Constance, and everyone watching, there is weakness in going to a doctor and having them say, take this medicine. There is strength in understanding why. To me, going on a statin drug for my cholesterol, but doc, what made it go up? Well, we don't know, but take this. You graduated from medical school. Man, I need a little more of your time. Statin drugs 
kill fungus. They do two things. They bring your cholesterol down and they kill fungus. You're smart. This, John and I and the guys here in the studio marvel at your questions, and there are thousands of them. You're a smart audience. If an antifungal takes my, my blood, stabilizes my blood fats, then what caused them to go awry? Thank you. Six letters. F-U-N-G-U-S. And yet, who needs to know that? No money in that. No money in that. Go home and take berberine and rotate it with resveratrol and begin taking olive leaf extract and change your diet so you don't feed these. No money in that. Clinical nutrition, clinical mycology. If that is void in medical training, we'll end up where we are today with a five, four, trillion dollar medical business that wants more than anything in the next five years to become what? A five trillion dollar medical business. Okay? Love talking to you guys. Okay. <clears throat> Hope that helps, uh, Constance. Something made it happen. Okay, so this is Grammy. I like that name, Grammy. I told you we... Uh, my wife wanted the grandkids, she gave herself a name, I'm Nana, and I think that's darling. And I wanted to see what the kids would call me. Look, it could be much worse, right? But Grandpa became Coco. And so you should see these boys. I told you we stayed with them last Thursday after I left here a week ago. Uh, wow, they're only a big, one of them's two years old, he's only this big, but this kid can climb walls. And he is so busy. Were we like that at one time? At what point did going to bed seem really cool? You know? At any rate, uh, my name is Coco. And those kids, they come in from the car and, Coco, Coco, play with me. Cars, horsey. Oh, we fell into bed Sunday night. Um, two things. Number one, totally exhausted. And number two, madly in love. Not only with our kids, but their kids. And Ruth pointed out something. John, I don't know if you and Joy see this, but as we age, you know, stuff happens. I don't know what in the world happens to your skin here. These kids, you can bounce a penny off their cheeks. They have the most beautiful skin. <laughs> Do you ever look at yours? Oh, I know. And as we deteriorate, you know, yeah, this thing, what's this all about? Um, but they are just the cutest. The things they say, you know, John. John and I are having so much fun in our old age. Who thought that a couple of old duffers in their 70s would be running a show that went global and, and doing this? God is good. Yeah, it is. It really is, and we both love it. And if I can help you, then that's all the better. Okay, so Grammy said, Hi, Doug. Today's show is great. My husband and I continue to be educated by this information. What can I do to help get the word out? I share your show and family with friends. You're doing it, Grammy. Thank you. John, educate me a little bit. We have a room where people can go in, uh, yeah, a community page, a community room, and I really like, I dipped in there a couple of times, your hearts are huge. There are people in there, you're always going to get the people to try and sell their wares in there. Okay, that's okay. If the wares are going to help you, I'm all for that. Um, but they're, they're opening, you who have been with me a long period of time, Grammy, you may have, get in there. Get in there and talk to people and help people. I went home Tuesday night, and there were, as you know, uh, a few hundred questions, but many of them were high from Chicago, high from China, high from, you know, all over the globe. You see some of them. Um, and so I probably answered 20 or 30 questions. I love doing that, but help me. I'm one guy who has to write shows and do TV and do everything else we do. Uh, so you can help me. Don't diagnose or prognose. You know, if someone says to you, I got a big lump on my jaw, don't say, well, that's, uh, you know, an immune disorder. That could be cancer. Don't do that. If I had a lump on my jaw, I'd see a doctor. You know, I'd rule out that it's not some horrible type of disease. And then I'd change. Help people with that. Help get my word out, Grammy. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Noletta, I love Noletta. Hubby and I are both struggling a bit after the holidays. <laughs> Trying our best to counsel others too. All information is welcome and appreciated. 
I, years ago I saw a politician who had this, uh, this tagline, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. And I picked that up 22 years ago when I started my television career. I picked that tagline up. And it really fits, doesn't it, Noletta and Grammy? If you always do what you've always done, expect the same results. Why do we have cancer? Why do we have atypical ventricular contractions? Why do we have migraine headaches? Because we haven't changed. And our doctors, God bless them, folks, don't know change. Uh, you know, here's a guy walking in to a, a pain specialist. You know, he's sitting in the waiting room tapping his head with a ball peen hammer. And he finally sees the doctor and says, you know, a doctor sits down, examines him, looks in his ear, nose, and throat. And all the time, he's hitting his head with a ball peen hammer. And the doctor says, okay, what's your problem? What, what are you here for today? Well, I'm getting headaches over my left eye here. And the doctor says, okay. And he writes him a prescription for furanol, for an anti-pain, a pain blocker. That's, I'm sorry, but I think much of medicine is there today. We're here to treat symptoms. Oh, by the way, you can't get more furanol if that helps, which it won't. The proper answer is stop beating your head with a hammer. Some things are so logical. You know what? My prostate uh, doc is causing so many problems. Well, can you tell me, do you drink alcohol? Yeah, I have five or six beers a night. Mycotoxins. And remember I put you on that antibiotic for the flu two months ago? One and one in mycotoxicology and fungus never makes two. When you have two mycotoxins in your body simultaneously, it makes 17. It's huge. Look at smokers in a bar eating peanuts. Three mycotoxins. Why do those people suffer so much at young ages, 30, 40 years old? Okay, so if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always gotten. Change. Noletta, Grammy, C-H-A-N-G-E. Isn't it funny that fungus and change are both six letters? Thank you. Always good to hear from you too. This time I promised I'd put them on the floor. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Izella. I love that name. Izella. Izella, here's what she says. My father is always um, says he doesn't have any energy. He can't even lift up his feet to get into the car. He has diabetes, arthritis, and an enlarged heart. Every man wants enlarged muscles, right? And many women want tight bodies, tight muscles, and so forth. So we lift weights. And this is just a bicep and a tricep muscle, but this is a muscle also in the heart. And the harder it has to work, the bigger it gets. Let me find a cardiologist to tell you that. I actually know a couple uh, who would tell you that. When you have a polysymptomatic person, see, I contend, and I learned this 25 years ago, uh, not true, 33 years ago, I contend when people come to see you for psoriasis, and by the way, they don't get to know you. Hey, Doug, you helped so much. Can I share something with you? My bowels don't move. I'm 45 years old. I might move my bowels once a week. Or men, I'm urinating blood. These are things I really heard. Whoa, that's serious. In the case of urinating blood, I'd pull the doctor in. And I'd say, okay, he has hematuria. He's urinating blood. Hmm. That's a problem. We better send you down and get... But here's what I learned. This was a male in his 60s who we got off alcohol totally because he had some very serious conditions. When he was off alcohol, no urinating blood. And uh, he broke... <laughs> he said he broke his diet. He said, broke it. I dropped it on the floor and it shattered. Um, and he got a bottle of scotch and he began drinking again. Do you think it's coincidental that two days later he's urinating blood? Is it kidneys? Is it urethral? Is it prostate? Who cares? Something's bleeding. You got to stop that. Fungi can do that. Well known. 
fungi cause a lot of nosebleeds. What ENT, what ear, nose, and throat doctor knows that? I mean, these, these fungi enlarge the gaps between the cells, so they stretch the sphenopalatine artery. It runs right here in the face. And, uh, and then it begins drip, 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 and before you know it, blood's pouring out of there. I, I'm never, you guys would have, every one of you, if you like this show, every one of you would have fallen in love with Howard Gottschalk, uh, a doctor that I worked with right when I got back from Vietnam. He hired me. I was 21 years old, and I went to work for him. Uh, this doctor was an inventor, and he invented the Gottschalk nasal stat. By the way, one time we were in surgery, uh, I was scrubbing for uh, a procedure, and the nurse said, do you need the Gottschalk retractor? So he invented retractors, you know, pull the tissue apart. And he also invented the Gottschalk nasostat. Let me tell you what this thing was. I wish I could draw it for you. It was a long, probably six inch, seven inch long tube with a membrane on the outside. And then it had a bulb at the bottom and an insert for a syringe. And you would put this, you'd get some, some number on it person with a bloody nose, you'd stick this up in the nose, it would stop at that ball, then he'd fill it with air. And that would take that membrane and blow it up, pushing on the sphenopalatine artery and stopping the bleeding. I mean, it was brilliant. It was just brilliant. Did I ever tell you about that, John? Yeah. His, he's, I think uh, seen those things. He died on 9-11, and I can't wait to see him again and tell him. You know, when you're a kid, you never tell your boss you know, how much you love him and appreciate him. But that man was spectacular. And he stopped a lot of nosebleeds, but then in my career, I, I, who cares what starts a nosebleed, whether it's a sock in the face, you know, or uh, you just want it stopped. But fungus causes nosebleeds. One of the things, so if you're living in a moldy home and you're blowing your nose at night before you go to bed and you go, wow, what's this? A Petri dish costs $20. Anybody can test their home, okay? Uh, so, Zella, your dad is polysymptomatic. Diabetes, arthritis, enlarged heart, and my guess is he's got many other problems. You start at the beginning, depending on how old he is um, and his interest. See, I think John and I are going to hit you know, 15, 20 years from now, a point at which it'd be kind of neat to go to heaven, okay? Um, and I just don't want to put up with this soreness and, and so forth. Now, if this were me, and it isn't, and I had diabetes, so my blood sugar, my beta cells were a mess, and my arthritis was bad, and I had this enlarged heart, um... C-H-A-N-G-E. And if he's living with me, if I'm living with my daughter, I'm saying, honey, could you do me a favor? Could you start following this Kaufman diet? It's pretty simple. Chicken breast, avocado one night. Uh, maybe turkey, bacon, and eggs. Delicious the next night. And maybe I could have some lettuce and a cucumber and, and uh, you know, a tomato. Could you, a piece of fish, you know, could you help me follow the Kaufman one diet? Could you get me some black seed oil? Could you get me some resveratrol? Could you get me some vitamin C? Can you take me to a physical therapist with my arthritis? Can I learn to put my socks on differently? I went to a chiropractor not long ago here after picking up the grandkids, and the secretary at the chiropractor's office said the number one reason people come in here, they can't put their socks on in the morning. They get out of bed, and they can't put their socks on. Um, made total sense to me. I think one day we're going to be there. And if he's open to it, Azella, if he's open to it, change, help him change. He is currently X. He is currently 75 years old. Your goal is to make him 76 years young. Can you do it? He loves you. He's your dad. He needs your help. He's obviously not getting much help from doctors. Maybe it's time to change. I'd let the doctors know. Yeah, he's not going to be coming back. Uh, we're going to see if we can stabilize his blood sugar, take care of his pain. CBD oil. 
man, you guys, there are a lot of wrong ones on the market right now, but there's a lot of right ones. Your job is to find the right one. Uh, it, Phyllis, good, and thank you so much, Isella. Uh, Phyllis, is this toxin added to chicken and fish? Um, oh, I see what she's asking, the xerelinone. Uh, no. Um, I don't know if there's this hunger to get a five pound chicken, you know, on the market after it's first born. Ted Slanker, my friend who's an organic farmer, uh, on live TV, I didn't know what chickens ate. This is 20 years ago. And I thought, I, you always see farmers, you know, out there with corn and the chickens are plucking, you know, they're eating the corn. And he said, no, my, I never give my chickens corn. I'm sitting there, and I'm a guy who interviews for a living, and I'm thinking in my brain, what in the world do they eat? And when I asked him that, you'd have thought, you know, I fell off a turnip truck, and I should have. Well, they eat bugs, and they eat weeds. And those are good chickens. We are currently, my concern with fish is farm-raised. I've been to a few farms. My family had farms in Iowa, and I went to them when I was little. Never once in all those acres did I see a fish. And we're proud today to sell farm fish. Again, if it's not wild caught, um, I just stay away from it, guys. And I know I seem uh, different. I'm sorry. But it, if you could feel at 70 like I feel, you'd do this. And then I hope at 80 and I hope at 90 till the good Lord calls me. I hope I continue feeling this good. Um, I won't eat fish at a restaurant. I don't go to a store and buy fish unless it says wild caught. And my wife and I love salmon and we get wild caught salmon. As far as chicken, um, I like range fed. I like chicken that eats weeds and bugs. Uh, Christine, I don't know. Here's a good question. What's the difference between palm oil and palm fruit oil? Palm fruit oil. And which one is bad for you? I will look it up for you, and I will respond to that. To hey, I've got the smartest audience in the world. Have they answered her by now, John, Christine, Jones? Um, you may have already answered. I don't have an answer for that. I don't know. Palm oil, palm fruit oil. One comes from the palm tree and the other comes from the fruit, which would be a coconut on a palm tree. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Barb, good question. I know you agree with Dave Asprey about a lot of things, but bulletproof bars are made from cashews. Should we not be eating them? I eat them all the time. I have raw cashews last night. So, guys, let me tell you, I've been, John and I decided at the beginning of the year to start using more of Alan's Keto Med. I had been putting a half a scoop in a cup of coffee when I drink a cup of coffee in lieu of milk. Delicious. And we decided at the end of last year, we feel good for a couple old guys, but could we feel better? Um, and so we committed to taking a scoop of Keto Med, and once or twice a day we shake it up, and that's our meal. And uh, <clears throat> We learned something, and that is, as you guys know, who use this new Keto Med, one year old now, and it's flying off the shelves for a reason. If you take it on an empty stomach, that's MCT oil, right? It pulls out. I mean, this is a fat that's a good fat, but it must use a tremendous amount of energy to work after you drink it. Because if you take it on an empty stomach, not half a scoop in coffee, but a full scoop in water, clean water, and shoot it down, drink, you drink that thing down. Do you, John, you still get nauseated? So what John and I have learned to do is take a handful of almonds, handful of cashews, so you get some protein and egg in your body before you take that. Not much, it doesn't take much. I've tried it with other things, an avocado, and it doesn't work. It seems to me the protein, get protein in there and then the fat may bind to it. I don't know how it's doing it. But if you're using Keto Med, if I had cancer, oh, I need to go back and I'm, I'm going to do it. Just bear with me. In 1974, uh, 
my boss, Howard Gottschalk, in California, the ear, nose, and throat doctor, introduced me to a doctor uh, who was heading up ear, nose, and throat research at USC Medical School. They were fascinated with food allergy. I was really studying food allergy and, and food hypersensitivity. That's different than food allergy back then. Dr. Everett Hughes was his name. We began doing food allergy tests on people and found that people had a lot of food allergy. At the time, I thought that was relevant. I don't today. I think what they had was gut permeability. So I'd chew up, you know, an egg and glass of milk and some cereal, and it would slowly leak through the gut. Where it gets into the bloodstream, you make a protective antibody to it. When you draw their blood, you're using the antibody uh, protein, you're using the blood serum, and you're saying, wow, you're allergic to egg and milk and cereal. And they'd say, oh, thanks for telling me. And they'd go off egg and milk and cereal, and we'd guide them with nutritionists. Uh, we want you to eat this instead. But a month later, we'd draw their blood, they were allergic to those. You're dealing with gut permeability and food allergy. Seal up the gut. Don't drink spackle. You know, when you got something, you pull a picture out of your wall, you put spackle over it. Don't drink that, but colostrum. I mean, I learned a lot in those years. I studied a lot. It seems that people who have gut hyperpermeability weren't breastfed. Colostrum is a miracle. Uh, so even to this day, pure, New Zealand, Australian, somewhere where they don't put xerelinone in your milk, somewhere where they don't use antibiotics, get bovine colostrum, it helps seal up a leaky gut. The right psyllium, P-S-Y-L-L-I-U-M, helps seal up, I'm convinced, a leaky gut, and then putting the right foods back in. So we draw their blood once a year or twice a year and it'd be different, new foods. Gee, those are the foods I'm eating now. And it didn't take, in 1980, a research paper ended up on my desk. Ah, here's the name of it. <clears throat> it was sent by a doctor friend of mine in Marina del Rey, California. Antigenically intact food macromolecules exit the gut lumen. Antigenically intact, big pieces of egg are getting through my gut intact? I mean, that's what food allergy is all about. Seal up the gut. Okay? So, uh, Dave Asprey uh, is a believer in, I love this guy, Dave Asprey. We've had some fun together. Um, Dave Asprey is the bulletproof guy, now the hacker guy. I love the names, bulletproof, hacker. He's really, he's a lot of fun. He and Mark Sisson, you get those guys together and it's, you have fun. I know you agree with Dave Asprey a lot about bulletproof bars. Oh, but his bulletproof bars are made from cashews. Then I love them. I love them. Uh, should we not be eating them? Uh, I don't know the rest of the ingredients. I've not had one of them, but now I'm going to if they're made with cashews. It's very inexpensive to put peanuts. Peanuts, almost free. Cashews? Someone who would put cashews in their product is more concerned about the quality of its content uh, than the price. People who can afford to spend, I don't know how much is a bar, five, six dollars for a bar, are going to want cashews. If you can only afford to spend a dollar or two for a bar, then you'll end up with peanuts. And I'm worried about peanuts. Not all of them, but I'm worried about peanuts. Again, great question. Thank you so much. Would love, uh, this from Beth, would love a chance for your diet book. I'm on a weight loss journey and have a long way to go. I lost 113 pounds so far. Have my diabetes under control. I've hit the wall and need help. Thank you for your help. Ta-da. John, I like your smiley face here. <laughs> says, John says, give it to Beth. Give it to Beth. Okay, Beth, if you'll do me a favor and go to live at knowthecause.com. I'm sorry? No. Um, oh, look at there's two Beths. Maybe she has two questions. So, John, I want to, no, they have different last names. Um, John, I need to ask you a question. You're the boss here in the studio. Two books? Two books, or one. They're both named Beth. we got to open our hearts. Okay, so I'll sign. It's easy. Uh, they're both, I don't know. One is Beth and one is Beth. The other Beth said, I fell off the wagon over the holidays and would love the book, especially if it's signed. It will be. God bless you for writing it. What, what page number is that? What, 
Oh, John, that's three. Yeah. And would you help me with that? And remember, we need two of them, two Beths. That's easy enough. You're both getting the book. Uh, thank you for watching today. Thank you for telling your friends. Listen to this. This, this comes from an extraordinary lady. I've had the chance to communicate a little with her. Her name is Dasha. Uh, she's been a registered nurse for 40 years, and I want you to hear this. I put my stage 1 GYN cancer into remission with only natural alternative treatments, antifungals, plant-based diet, etc. As a nurse for 40 years, I refuse surgery, chemo, and radiation. Dasha, I had a tough time when I was medically trained converting to someone who said, I'm not going to... I'm not going to do that. Um, I remember sitting home watching mom and dad years ago, after I got back from Vietnam, and it was Nathan Pritikin who told me, if you want to know how your health will turn out, sit down with your mom and dad. Eat with them, talk with them, laugh with them. And I went to mom and dad's, and it turns out they couldn't go out to dinner with me. But um, mom and dad were smokers. Mom and dad were drinkers. Um, and neither of them exercised, except mom in her late life. Wow. She won all kinds of trophies for swimming. Of course, she was in the 80-year class. She lived to be 85 years old, and she'd swim miles. But in her early days, she didn't, until really dad died. The dad had lost a leg to cancer, so they say. Uh, had lost a leg to cancer, and so he was handicapped. Mom was great. Put a, you know, I had to go through all that with him. But it was very difficult for me, and I was only, look, my training isn't extensive. I mean, I, I was a Navy corpsman. We were trained in emergency medicine, and then off to Vietnam we went. And so I didn't have anywhere near the education that Dasha had. But the more education you have, take your average physician. Thank God I know a hundred of them that are alternative doctors, because I speak to them. Um, but an average doctor, I would rarely have time for in 2017, I knew I had pneumonia. I told you guys, I was lecturing. and So I took myself to a little doc in the box clinic and he was a guardian angel. I told him what I needed, uh, he agreed, he looked at me and said, okay, yeah, I'm gonna give you that. And I went on an antibiotic and the strangest thing happened, because I hadn't been on an antibiotic for 50 years before that. Uh, one of my friends came over to the house and I said, can I get you a cup of coffee? And I was getting better, I was feeling better after two days. And on the third day, I took the antibiotic in the morning, and I went to pour his coffee, and my hand was shaking like this, and I poured the coffee all over him, and I said, oh, I'm sorry, I, I haven't been well, and he just laughed it off. And, but I thought, holy cow, neurotoxicity, antibiotic-driven neurotoxicity. Um, you know, I have trembles, like Parkinson's. It was horrible. I took myself off the antibiotic, looked at rotating other natural things, and within a few days, I was 100%. So I would have a problem, Dasha, doing what you did. Congratulations, I'm very proud of you, and you're going to go into my great file for that one. That was really good. Uh, and I hope, Dasha, as an RN, you would go into our community page. We have a lot of RNs, you know. Uh, would go into our community page, remind people you know, that you're a nurse and you can't treat, you can't mitigate disease, you can't diagnose nor prognose, but you have a heart, obviously. Go in and maybe point people in the right direction. Pam asks, how do you treat candida in the sinuses? Uh, I wish I had taken a picture. My wife and I were in Temple, Texas the other day, and we were in a store called Natural Grocers, and we walked in, there were very few people there. We went in the evening on our drive back to Dallas from seeing the grandkids. And uh, there was a woman cooking uh, turkey sausage or something. And she said, hi folks, would you like? And she said, oh my gosh, you're Doug Kaufman. <laughs> All of a sudden, for, and of course, you know, I'm probably in a t-shirt, my pants are filthy, my hair is straight up in the air. Yep, I'm glad I didn't have a beer in my hand, you know. And uh, she said, I am so, you, you saved my life about seven years ago. Told me of her asthma problems and so forth. These are the kinds of people that I would love to do testimonials on. A great one from Dasha. When you have 
By the way, the Mayo Clinic stated 21 years ago that almost all chronic sinusitis is fungus. Didn't matter to the medical community. You're still going on an antibiotic. Changing habits is difficult. They're addicted to writing prescriptions for antibiotics. There I said it. They admit they're addicted. Antibiotic stewardship is coming on board now within the next, what, 15, 20 years. They'll slow down on that. Currently, I don't believe they are. You, if you have candida yeast growing in the nasal sinuses, guys, this grows where it's moist. The intestines, the ear canal, the mouth, the nose, the vaginal tract. This is where candida, uh, candida albicans, which is a pathogen, it starts out as a commensal. God put it there. We activate it with antibiotics and other things, alcohols and so forth, and make it a bad guy. Um, you rotate, we were at Natural Grocers, and what I was there to get was a couple more nasal sprays. So I've been using two or three nasal sprays. I breathe fine, but I, I didn't always. I had horrible sinus problems. Wonder. See, that's the price for nineteen. Yeah. That's on our website, but she he found it for fifty nine dollars. So. <laughs> Pam, Pam Steenhook, uh, the fungus guide to weight loss. Why fifty nine dollars for a paperback? That, that's our price on our website. I just pulled it off. What do we sell for? Nineteen dollars and ninety five cents. You know what I love, John, are these customer reviews. Have you ever gone on Amazon and looked at my, I don't sell them on Amazon, I only sell these books privately on my own website, but yeah, people resell it, um, and th so this was a signed one? That may be what she saw, yeah. I am so thrilled. My books, if I sign my book, it goes down in value. People through the years, I'm sure people die or, you know, they sell all their books. And if my book is signed, it goes for less, meaning my signature is worth less than anyone else's. This is pretty good. Okay. That great information. Pam, thank you so much for that. $59 signed. Wow. Somebody's trying to make a killing off Doug's signature. I wish I could sit home all day, sign five times, make $250. My work's done. Uh, so where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Can you recommend a good CBD oil? Jamie Allen North uh, has put one together called uh, what is it? What is his called, John? Uh, no, no, I I forget. Keto Med, yeah, KetoMed.com. Uh, Alan worked on this, spent a lot of money, worked on it for a year and a half. It is, I gave it to one of my dear friends over Christmas, gave a bottle of it to her, and she just wrote back and she said, I'm in tears, I'm sleeping every night. Um, so look it up. Uh, but where was I? Okay. Oh, Dasha, then how do you treat candida in the sinuses? I would know that if it's in the sinuses, it's probably throughout your body, I'd starve it, and I'd rotate sinu oregano, um, clear, X-L-E-A-R, has a new uh, nasal spray I love. Um, uh, uh, there are so many that I use, olive leaf, nasal spray. I love Nutribiotics because it's $7. I just bought another bottle. They're cheap, but I'd rotate it. These fungi are smart that live up in the sinuses. Sherry, I haven't seen Sherry's name here for so long and it's so good to see her. Yes, I have prepared that SEAC tea for a friend with cancer 17 years ago. He had a very aggressive form of cancer, still living 17 years later and cancer never returned. Now I know Sherry. When I went out to lecture in California, she attended and uh, met me and I met her and we talked and talked. She's honest. You know, this is, you hear it from Sherry. And I know Sherry does drop in. Her name is Sherry Hamilton. If you see her dropping in, this is a smart woman to help you guys in the community room. Thank you and it's great to see your name. 
Okay, so Lynn says, uh, hey Doug, my father-in-law is 88 and has found out he has plaque in his vein on the left side of his neck. Of course, they can't operate and we don't want them to, but they put him on Lipitor for it. Is there any supplements he can take? Wow. Okay, I need to show you this because I think it'll help you. And if this was my dad, see, I think 88, I still have years left. That's just who I am, I'd like to think, you know. This book, if you can get a copy of it, and I bet you can, Atherosclerosis, Hope at Last. I'll turn it sideways. This is a 700 page book. Every page of this book says that coronary artery diseases, atherosclerosis and the rest have a fungal component. Written by three medical doctors at the World Health Organization. The little guy in the middle and I became friends and had so much fun, Dr. A.V. Costantini. I have read this book and read this book and read this book and I'm telling you, if my dad had this problem, what did we learn earlier in the show, Lynn? Lipitor kills fungus. It also lowers cholesterol level. Many doctors believe that cholesterol from egg yolks and meat fat pack up in our veins and arteries. I don't believe that, but they're the doctor and they believe that, so never take my word over a doctor's. But, gee, I'd, I'd look at niacin. I'd look at the, a good daily multi-B. I would, your doctor isn't going to give you this unless he has a skin doctor. Then I would ask for Spornox. Um, I think there are fewer side effects with the azol drugs, the, the antifungal drugs, than there are with these uh, lipid reducers like Lipitor, statin drugs. I'd only do the Spornox a week or two. I'd go on the Kaufman diet and I would keep a meeting in three more months with that doctor and I would let him do the juggler, you know, the carotid. I'd, I'd let him scan again and see if the plaque has now been reduced. But if you want to read a book all about that, I've never seen a book like this before. Fungus and mycotoxins, they believe the etiology of atherosclerosis, hope at last, fungus. Good question. Sorry about your dad. Um, these are such, oops, how'd I get to page nine? Wow, okay, Debbie's got a page, just hear me. Doug, I got caught between a horse's teeth, my finger during a routine activity. My mare went after another horse as I was taking off its blanket, so my finger took the blunt, brunt of it. The top third of my index finger was almost severed. Three hours after leaving the ER with a tetanus shot, a script for two weeks of antibiotics, and a painkiller, uh, I negotiated five fluconazole from the physician. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how much that makes me smile. Yes, you do. You just saw. I negotiated five Diflucan from the physician's assistant. So I'm uh, not taking the pain meds. Arnica works fine. Arnica, I think, is such a wonderful homeopathic remedy. Arnica, A-R-N-I-C-A. Should be in everyone's uh, medicine cabinet. Do you believe they called it that? I don't want to take the antibiotics. Maybe I should for a few days. Would I take one or more of the fluconazole at the same time? Okay, different. Much appreciate you and the lifestyle testament. To the Kaufman family lifestyle, the ER folks couldn't believe I'm taking no meds, no drinking, smoking. I exercise regularly. And I've gotten down to a trim, healthy weight due to my lifestyle. Kaufman won. Apparently, I'm a rare person. Deborah, the, the I just need, this is going to be saved also. Um, okay. I can't tell you what to do. But if a third of your finger was almost severed, maybe bacteria, especially a horse's blanket, maybe bacteria got in that. Maybe not. Maybe when they were sewing it back on, you know, they use a lot of cleansers, uh, many of them, as they're putting that back on. Maybe those killed the bacteria. Would I take, I believe that antibiotics should be judiciously taken. And if I'm seeing you know, this thing heading south on me and a huge amount of pain, I'm taking the antibiotic. 
not you. You should do what your doctor tells you. Let me tell you if this happened to me. Um, there's an upside to taking that antibiotic. There's a downside, but not to taking one round of antibiotics. You're like me. You take good care of yourself and so forth. Um, and I don't think the antibiotic's going to hurt you. Now, the fluconazole, the diflucan, um, an antibiotic will kill the good bacteria in your gut. Yeast that compete with the bacteria for a food supply now can become philentomous fungi, can grow out of control. That's where nystatiner diflucan will really benefit you. So I might hang on to the diflucan until after you're done with the antibiotic. I think you're going to be fine. The point I want to make here is, Deborah, uh, your lifestyle is conducive to you being fine. Um, I can't tell you not to take the antibiotic. If you didn't, I would recommend you call the clinic, talk to the PA, and say, you know, this thing's really fine. Whoever sewed that up did a stellar job. Uh, I d can I back off not taking this antibiotic? She may know something I don't. Um, and thank you again for the fluconazole. Diflucan erases yeast in the bloodstream and in the body. Uh, getting five diflucan, what a story. I just love you guys. It's amazing. Um, I think their shelf life is a year, maybe longer, so I might hang on to those. Um, but I think getting the tetanus shot, you know, I think you're going to be fine. If you take the antibiotic, I think you're going to be fine. More importantly than the diflucan, chase with a good probiotic. Okay? That'll put the bacteria back in and restore homeostasis in the gut. Remember, guys, 70% to 80% of your whole immune system, we used to think it was under here and up here and top of your legs. That, that's not it. Your immune system is in your gut. Okay? So keep that gut healthy. Put probiotics back in. Man, you guys are teaching me. I should pay you for watching this. What's that, a helicopter, John, going overhead? Nice loud one. Uh, Danny, okay, Dan, sorry. Hey, Doug, question. My dad had a liver bypass about a year ago. He's currently waiting on transplant lists for the liver and the kidney. Okay, currently ends up in the hospital almost weekly, probably ammonia. Uh, currently ends up in the hospital almost, yeah, uh, due to extremely high ammonia levels. Any suggestions what we can do to help stabilize them, especially for the needed transplant? Oh, boy. You've got uh, an indication of organ failure, obviously, going on here. The transplant is really important. Um, let's see, liver and kidney. Ask the doctor if you can begin taking Dr. O'Hara's probiotics. Um, I hope he's not drinking. I hope he's not eating corn. I hope he's not, uh, you know, getting into peanuts or wheat. These are the foods that very often have these fungi in them that can lead to cirrhosis. Um, so uh, be careful with his diet. Ask about probiotics. It's amazing how probiotics can help these patients. Daniel, I'm sorry about that, but um, I got to tell you, I have a dear friend who's had a liver and kidney bypass, and he's healthier today than he was 10 years ago. It's a miracle. This is where American medicine shines. Good question. Thank you so much. <laughs> Grammy, please let Abby know that the Thai turkey meatballs are a bomb. Is it possible to reverse the DNA mutation? DNA only mutates in the presence of poisons. You're not eating strychnine, but we are eating mycotoxins. We went over that, these fungal metabolites. So minimize your mycotoxin intake. Grains, alcohol, antibiotics, peanuts. Minimize your mycotoxin intake. You therefore minimize the mutation that fungal mycotoxins cause to human DNA. Good questions. And I'll let Abby know that the turkey meatballs are the bomb. <laughs> Oh, um, Doug, seven years ago I went to the doctor and dis, uh, with tinnitus or tinnitus. He sent me for a scan, discovered I have a benign acoustic neuroma. I was told this was the cause of tinnitus. Could be a fungal infection. Karen, what have we got to lose? Here's the coolest thing in the world. Now they can see on a scan, obviously, a neuroma. Um, what makes that lump? 
I'll never forget the Mayo Clinic saying they found fungus in polyps. I can't tell you how many ovarian cysts, women with ovarian cysts, I was able to help with an antifungal program. I don't know if your acoustic neuroma is due to fungus, but in a heartbeat, I would go on the Kaufman diet. And maybe, just maybe, January 23, 24, 2021, you'll write back in and say, this is amazing, it's gone. I think many lumps and bumps in our body are caused by fungus. Good for you. And if I wanted to accelerate that, I'd ask for, I'd probably become a friend with our dear friend who wrote, ah, Deborah. You can find that PA and get a half a dozen Diflucan. Might be able to accelerate that. Good questions, good questions. Uh, SL, people I have talked to say they've heard the news that acetaminophen is said to cause cancer. Just shocking. Who do we trust anymore? My issue in medicine is trust. Hormone replacement therapy. Every healthy woman, woman their gynecologist was duty-bound to put them on hormone replacement therapy. Why? Well, we wanted their libido to be really high, and we wanted to reduce the risk of coronary artery disease or stroke. Oh, and we didn't want them to have breast cancer. Shame on them. In 2000, the Women's Health Initiative abruptly stopped when we found that stroke and cancer were induced or caused by hormone replacement therapy. Now, what are men doing? Men, what did we not learn from women? Stop it with your low T. God shuts hormones off. I just, don't get me started. Um, so, I've got to tell you, yeah, and here's another one. Man, this is amazing. Acetaminophen, shocking. Statin drugs causing all these muscle. So what? Just keep taking it. Are we people or are we sheeple? We are told, folks, from the time we're little, the doctors are really smart, and we need to listen to everything they tell us. Um, I don't have a doctor. In the past fifth, my last physical exam was my exit physical from the military, 1972. Four years active, two years inactive reserves. So 1972, I was officially out. An exit physical said everything was fine. I haven't gone back to a doctor. I feel fine. Okay? Um, shocking that acetaminophen would now be found to be a carcinogen. But I got to tell you, folks, we had a choice. Acetaminophen or maybe CBD or maybe a homeopathic remedy. We have choices. Let food be your medicine. Then medicine will become your food. So not, I'm, not, I'm never shocked in medicine anymore. I think at the tail end of this statin thing or maybe these vaccines, I think we're going to find some pretty devastating stuff. Uh, but I live in America, and I say no to them. That's all. That's okay. I say no to store-bought meat. It's okay. Oh, this is Marsha. Marsha is a naturopathic doc. Hi, Doug, John, and KTC crew. Thanks for all you do. We are rich. Uh, we are rich daily because of your sharing. FUPO. You know what FUPO stands for? Fungus until proven otherwise. Uh, Dan, a few weeks ago I asked you, how does my wife give off, off Cymbalta? The answer was a product called 5-HTP. It is a neurotransmitter support. My wife is back to normal. Wow. Man, I see these drug ads, you guys. You gotta admit they're transparent. Oh, it may cause cancer. Some people have lost their lives. Do Who watches that? And then says, hey, <laughs> millions. The answer, not true. Tens of thousands of people, when they see the Cymbalta ad, call their doctor. Well, I'm already taking three antidepressants. Yeah, but we're finding four of them. Seems to work best. Of course they're finding four of them. I don't mean to be cynical, 
but there's a tremendous conflict of interest when drug companies are running ads on TV that benefit physicians, new patients. Hey, they're going to come flocking to you to get these drugs. And Doc, you better darn well write them. And you better talk about herbs and supplements this way. If you know that, there's so much peace. I sleep so well at night. I'll watch the ads, and I told you guys that my poor wife has to, you know, I'll be in the kitchen filling up a water or something, eating a handful of nuts, and there's a drug ad that comes on, and I'll go, oh, boy, and she'll say, Doug, don't say it, don't say it. My wife has taught me. Here's the flip side of this coin, and Dan, I'm thrilled. Congratulations. A 5-HTP, by the way, is 5-hydroxytryptophan. L-tryptophan, when taken with its co-nutrient called pyridoxine, vitamin B6, enables peace, relaxation, sleep. Oh, wonderful stuff. My wife will always say, and she's taught me, she's really good, the drug company salesmen, men and women, drug company heads, the bosses, uh, doctors, their wives and their kids are all on drugs. They believe in this, folks. We've gone over this earlier in the show, didn't we? When you're in the medical field, all you think is medicine. Don't be crazy with arnica, a homeopathic remedy for pain. CBD, Doug, you ought to be in jail for talking about that. The cool thing about living in America is we get to choose still. That's still a freedom we have. Now we have to become very careful because physicians are going online and talking about natural supplements and talking about maybe some of the dangers that vaccines pose and they're being ostracized. We have to be very, very careful with what we say, not what we believe. It's one thing to expound upon your disdain for pharmaceutical drugs, but it's a whole other thing to say, I'm not going down that road. I'd have to be pretty sick to go on four antidepressants. If you only knew that the gut monitors the brain, and when the gut's right, no alcohol, no soda pop, no cereal, when the gut's right, this just works great. And for a 70-year-old guy to get out of bed and pull my socks on, my shorts on, and you know, take a shower, it's amazing. It's just amazing how good I feel. And I wish you all could feel this way. Hence the show. What I've told John years ago, basically in three words, what I want from this show is for you guys to squeeze my brain. I want for you to have some of this knowledge that's been imparted in, to me by geniuses in the past 50 years. I want you to enjoy the same good health I do. Why? Then you don't have to run from, have this insurance that's so good, and run from doctor to doctor to doctor. If you only knew in saying goodbye to you today that you are, 70% of you, are totally in control of your wellness and your illness. We just haven't been taught that yet. And I hope through the year 2020, I can instill that information in you. I have enjoyed this. God bless you. And I'll see you Tuesday at 3 p.m. Thanks for telling your friends.